All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. Hope you're ready for some adventure because we are going deep into the swamps on this one. We're gonna be adventuring to the only natural lake in Texas and trying to go after some bass and maybe some other species, doing some camping, and this adventure is sponsored by Mystery Tackle Box. Now, if you've been on the channel for a while, you know the gist with MTB, but basically they are a service that provides you premium tackle in a box for value to your doorstep. Subscriptions makes it easy for you. Everything subscriptions. Hey, you don't have to go out, okay? Don't want to get Corona? Get a ship right to your door. It's easy. This is the Pro Bass Box. This is what I get every month because I do so much bass fishing, but they have other species too. So whatever kind of dangle you're into, they got you covered. Let's just bust it open real quick and see what we're dealing with heading to the swamps. Wow, right away. They gave me a frog, and they did not know I was going to the swamps. Got a swim bait, got a lipless crank bait, got a spinner bait, got some plastics to, in here. Basically everything you need to go bass fishing, and it's catered to the month. Whatever's hot, they put it in the box. All you new fishing freaks that wanna get your hands on one of these, they're offering your first box for as low as five bucks. And you can use the code MONDO at checkout, and discounts will be applied. So anyways, y'all, it's a great deal. Go get signed up. And MTB has sponsored many videos on this channel, many adventures, and I'm very excited about this one because it is a lake that I've never been to and it is the only natural lake in Texas. I've wanted to fish this lake for so many years. I've heard it's absolutely majestic. Lots of cypress trees and just, you know, a swamp. Think about swamp. Let's get the crispy collector on the road. This is its first big road trip. And let's see if we can find us a place to sleep in Swampville. She's ready for the road. I hope she doesn't fall apart, but I got one more thing I need to do. I need to pill my chicken. You heard me correctly, pill a chicken. I have some uh, antibiotics here. I'm, I'm giving my chickens. This is so unfortunate right now, y'all, because I need these eggs, man. I don't know if you've been in the grocery store, but uh, eggs have just been out of control, milk, you know, we went to the grocery store the other day and they were like wiped out of everything. So really helps having a uh, little homestead here that we can just come collect our, our chicken eggs. Unfortunately, one of our girls got sick. We had to take her to the vet and they gave us some antibiotics and you're not supposed to eat the eggs when you're, <laughs> when they're on antibiotics. One of the girls is clucking in there. I already pilled two of them. I just need to pill this other one that's, well, she's sitting on an egg. Okay, excuse me, girls. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I know y'all are sitting on those eggs. Yeah, she's got two up under there. Okay, well, uh, looks like I'm gonna have to wait or Stephanie is gonna have to pill that chicken because Rain is coming, and we have got to get to the swamps, y'all. You'll realize when you get here, I wouldn't call you for no reason. This is for, this is this is the worst ever been stuck in my life. Okay. Um, Jackknife. Sorry about that. Uh, my my like my the tongue of the the tongue or the the nose of the boat is. Like the nose of the boat is two inches away from my tail light right now. Did you slide off into a ditch? Here? Yeah, it slid. Oh, yeah, no. like I had to turn, I had to turn left. My truck slid, and the boat kept going straight. Oh gosh, I'm on my way to uh, to Cato, but I'll I'll help you, man. Just send me the pin, and I'll plug it in. I'm gonna send you this pin. Okay, it might take me a little bit, so just hang in there. I have, yeah, I'll be here. I ain't going anywhere. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> Bye. All right, y'all, well, this day is definitely taking a turn. I'm gonna tell you two things that have happened and that just feel like there's a little little extra uh, chemistry in the atmosphere, if you know what I'm saying. I forgot my watch and my wedding ring, so I went back to the house as soon as I pulled out. Uh, when I stopped my truck, I realized my boat was not fully on the ball. So the hitch and ball were not fully connected. So that would have been a disaster going down the highway. Rob calls me and it just so happens that our paths are, uh, 
basically meeting today. Just boogers up our plans to go fishing today, but you just gotta help a friend in need, especially when it all lines up like this. And I feel like guardian angels are upon me today, so let's go help Rob out of the mud. You just gotta, gotta stay calm, stay collected, help your brothers and sisters, your neighbors. Everybody just be cool. Corona's gonna die out. And in the meantime, enjoy some fishing. You know, that's a good way to get away. Get away from the crowds. We're heading into the deep woods right now. Nobody traveling on these roads. That squirrel right there was just taken out by a hawk. Saw him come swoop down. There's two of them there fighting over it. It's crazy. I don't see the hawks, but I see a lake over here and we're supposedly really close. Just gonna start looking for the white truck. This is it with this thing. This is the final go. Rob, you've gone you've gone ahead and got yourself into a little situation here, bud. I'm in more of a situation. <laughs> Look at the boat, man. Looks like it was just just ran the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, yeah. Like it just took its final lap. It's pretty bad. I'm not gonna, oh man. I'm not gonna pretend like it's not. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I caught a fish today though. Well, that's good. <laughs> so it's my day's going good. I've caught a fish, a tree, I've cut out a log. Oh my gosh. I just want you to see the jackknife on the other side. Okay. That's all I'm really, this is. So this is it y'all. Uh, there's obviously been some effort here to get it out. <laughs> Luckily Rob, I was like along this route, you know, this is probably 30 minutes out of my way, but. Have you ever seen, uh... have you ever seen this? Well, let's see what we can do. Rob's got a 90 degree turn, like a 90 degree angle on his boat and his truck. I didn't know this, but his, that truck's two wheel drive and it's very, very heavy. Thank goodness the tables have turned here. I have four wheel drive. So I'm gonna hook up to the front of his truck and hopefully he's gonna get enough traction where he can start uh, moving forward. But um, we might have to disconnect the truck from the boat and then do one at a time, which would, take a long time but that's what we're here for Rob's got some chains thankfully let's hook it up let's give it a game try to pull out Rob's boat which believe it or not is probably heavier than that truck so big chains see if the little diesel the little dirty max can get it out okay y'all we definitely had uh, some setbacks some issues but we got his boat out 
man, that's funny. You know, I told you, I was like, I'm not going another year without four wheel drive. And I got this truck. It was always like, oh yeah, Rackley doesn't have four wheel drive. You can't go here. Oh, you can't help this, blah, 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 blah. We just proved the little Dirty Max is, is pretty darn good. So, plus we got, got some really good tires on here. But I still got like another 200 yards to get this thing through some mud. We're just gonna keep the momentum going and get it to the asphalt. Rob can hook his truck up and then we'll head on our way. Lunkers TV back on the road, baby. Not telling you what to do, but you may want to go over to his channel and uh, give that video a watch. He said he had the camera on when he was like sliding around and everything getting stuck. So not the first time he's done it. It wasn't easy. But well, we got him out, and that is that has definitely affected our uh, fishing time if we get to do any today. But the goal now is try to get to a camping spot, and hopefully something is available because y'all, the Corona thing is taking over. If people aren't in school, if they're not at work, what are they gonna be doing? Fishing, camping, you know, extended spring break for how many months? I don't know. I was gonna see if you had any tent camping available for tonight. Have a few spots and no yet. Just, I've just got a tent. I don't need any water hookups. Yes. We got lucky and they still got some camping spots open. That is excellent news. I'm so excited to see what this lake actually looks like. I'm, I'm excited to put the lens on it for you guys. But Caddo Lake, I believe, is the original port in Texas where people would come with their cargo from the ocean and literally take it up the river and go to Caddo Lake and stop there, trade there, and basically conduct commerce there. Fur trade was big. The lake is huge. I don't have GPS on the boat. I'm bringing handheld GPS. This is all new territory for me. We are here at the ramp now in the Spanish Moss, y'all. It is intense. Check this water out. It's because I don't know how to run this place and I've heard it can be pretty cantankerous and uh, if I hit a stump in this thing it's not the end of the day uh, if I hit a big stump in my big bass boat that's a problem this motor right here it'll actually just flip up so I just don't need to break a propeller um, there's already I can see like a lot of logs a lot of debris and stuff in the water y'all yeah, this place is this is the daggum swamps. So let's go do a little fishing, let's explore, and then we'll set up our camp, get ready for tonight. Should be a nice camping night if it doesn't rain. This lake is a menagerie of trees. Like this is, I've never fished a lake like this. That is just this swampy, this thick. My dad told me about uh, the time he caught his personal best in a swamp like this on, on top water. It was like an eight and a half pound bass. This is the only thing I can imagine is like the stories he told me sitting under the Spanish moss and it's just like that tea colored water. It's really cool. It's a really cool looking place to fish, but there's so much cover 
so much shallow cover. Now it's like, okay, where do I go? It's beautiful, but where do I go? How do I catch it? I think I'm just going to go with your standards here, starting off with a spinnerbait and a jig. Standard swamp, swamp lures. I don't even know how deep it is. Okay, I can't touch the bottom right here, so it's pretty deep. This bass has got to be shallow. So I have no way of knowing the water temperature, but I'm just going to assume it's probably getting around 60, 59, something like that. I mean, would y'all just look at this? Majestic beauty. Come on with the fish. Lots of shad in this area. And I'm just flipping a little 3 8 ounce jig, a little juicy with uh, Alabama Craw as a trailer. Pitching away here, trying to get my first bite. Normally I'd be super excited to even flip a cypress tree, but right here I'm like, well, there's literally millions of them in here. So which ones are gonna be the legit ones? I started in the back. Now I've worked my way out front. There's definitely some current here, so I'm wondering wondering if that would pull them out of the backwater areas and more towards this type stuff right here. Got one. Yep. Oh my gosh, he came off. Drag wasn't set. Yikes. Man, he sat there and just had it. As soon as I started getting in that current, it was like I could never catch up to that fish. I had a six, three to one gear ratio reels. I'm going to tell you guys right now, don't flip with one of these. <laughs> Cause my drag was kind of loose, which I want it to be, you know, about like that on 20 pound test. But if I would have had a high speed gear ratio reel, I would have caught that fish. Cause I've been able to reel down and set the hook again. So first bite confirmed on a jig. bite so far and that came at the kind of like the mouth of one of these creeks wow you can get lost out here let me just say that wow there's just miles and miles and miles of little little creek arms like this little bayous I got time for a little bit more recon I will be fishing tomorrow so stay tuned subscribe but today I wanted to get here get camp set up as usual I just need to figure out exactly where these bass are. I'm gonna shut it down right here and fish this little spot though. I see like four boats back here. I'm gonna take it as if we just, we found, we found a good bass fishing spot. So I'm seeing lots of flat, I mean, this whole thing is just a flat back here and it looks like weightless bait extravaganza tied on a, uh, a five inch lunker log. This is just straight up spawning. I can't see the fish, but I know that they've got to be on this flat. Oh my God, he broke me off. Oh my God, he just broke me off. Well guys, I'm uh, 0 for 2. Tighten my drag up and uh, there she goes. Ugh. God, that pisses me off, y'all. Two fish, two good fish probably. Okay, mosquitoes are real. Mosquitoes are real out here, y'all. March mosquitoes, I've never seen that in my life. I let one go and then I broke one off. I wanted to at least get one bass today under my belt, but I think I'm gonna have to take it in because um, I hear the frogs, mosquitoes are really coming out and it is going to rain. So let's just start our way back. If we see anything juicy and we have a little bit of time, we'll stop and hit it, but we still gotta make food and fire.
Last night was really rough. Um, it started raining really bad. I tried to get a fire going. I couldn't even do that. I already had wet wood and it was just, uh, it was just a catastrophe. Uh, I only slept like an hour. There was branches that fell. Let me show you this. This thing fell on, uh, on the picnic table and scared the daylights out of me in the middle of the night. Uh, not to mention something else, I'm gonna, I gotta tell you in just a minute. But anyway, it was not the best camping experience and I couldn't really show it because it was just pouring down rain. I know I've mentioned this before, but I love this tent. <laughs> and it's the one I carry on a lot of quick trips like this, like if I'm only staying a night or a couple of nights, or if I'm just, um, maybe I'm staying a bunch of nights, but I'm just moving places. This is the one I take because it's it's literally designed to be a two-person backpack tent, mountain hunting tent. Rained all last night, kept me dry. I had a little bit of moisture on my sleeping pad, and there was just a little bit of moisture around the edges. I actually I keep my boots on the outside like this, and uh, it had some water splash up on it, but it was okay. And these boots are are waterproof, so I just really like the way it lays out. But the best thing about it is it breaks down really fast, and I've already showed that in other videos, but. This is the last thing we got to do, and when I get home, I need to make sure I let this thing dry out. Always dry out your equipment when you get home, because if you don't, it will come out stinking like a mildew, old, soggy, you know what. So, let's pack her on up, and then let's head to the water. Alright, I'm going to tell you all this now. So when I got to my camp last night and it started raining and I was like struggling to set up the tent and everything and uh, try to get that fire going, there was a guy who came over and he kind of helped me with a, with a light to get my torch going and seemed like a nice guy. But then he went back to his camp and was just sitting there and like rocking and talking to himself and saying some weird stuff and constantly spitting like he had the biggest like a whole can of dip in his mouth for over an hour it was weird and it just just burping as loud as he could it was the strangest so when i got in that tent it was like oh please lord don't let this guy come over here and say something weird to me do something weird to me anyway i think i got all washed out by the rain but it was strange y'all i'm gonna leave it there that was my camping experience it cost me ten dollars I do recommend, if you're a Texas resident, getting that state pass uh, because there's a lot of great Texas parks here. I mean, this place is gorgeous. There's a lot of people here right now because it's spring break, extended spring break because of coronavirus. But uh, get that pass and then you can go to uh, all the different parks and I've actually launched at uh, quite a few of those. So more adventure ahead, y'all, as we head into Mississippi for a whole nother adventure going after the crappie. and. Uh, one more adventure out here on the mystical Caddo Lake. So thank you guys for being here. Go ahead and smash that like button for swamps, mosquitoes, and everything biological, and I'll see y'all on the next one.